Hey guys, I'm Annie 2 Designs and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So you might have noticed that I'm doing another Scrap Epic challenge if you look at the title. And that is because the first one I did, I actually completed it before um, a lot of Outlet and Curiosity Cosplay even announced that they were doing a quarantine lockdown version. And that made me think, well, maybe I could do another one, but maybe I could do it slightly different this time. So instead of doing a pre-existing character, this time for the Scrap Epic Challenge Quarantine Edition, I'm going to try making something completely original or an original concept of a pre-existing character. I've never done something like this and with the limitations of what I have in my mom's storage room, it kind of makes it a little bit fun there and I had a lot of fun coming up with some designs. So because I'm also limited to what I have at my mom's place, I'm also limited on my patterns. So I decided I've always wanted to use this pattern for a more elvish looking um, design. Um, I use this for my Rosalina cosplay, but of course I only use it mostly for this shape here. So this time I'm actually going to use it for the whole piece or most of the whole piece. You'll see what I mean in a second. So the, what I'll be doing is I'll be doing a um, Princess Zelda original design. Um, if, you're, if you're aware of any of my fandoms, you'll know that Zelda is my number one franchise and my favorite fandom. I am heavily involved and I've done a lot of Legend of Zelda cosplays. So it should be no surprise that I'm doing it like this. But this time I want to make her design a little bit more typically elvish, I guess is a way to put it. And have a lot of fun with a lot of the fabrics that I have on hand. So fabrics I have in hand are, I have some leftovers from my Cardcaptor Sakura uh, petal dress. Um, this beautiful cream colored duchess satin, which is very similar actually to her Twilight Princess coloring. Um, and I have these lovely satins and an almost same color chiffon, which I think I'm gonna use for the bodice and the sleeves. I have a lovely wig from Art of Wigs Canada. This is the Arwen, I believe in warm light brown. I originally got this for a Tario cosplay, I just never used it. And it is a lace front. It's one of their nicer and more expensive wigs. And I just have it. So we're gonna make Zelda a ginger this time. I do like the occasional time when Zelda does have orange or orangey colored hair or brunette colors. So this would be absolutely perfect for that. And I have some lovely gold as well, which I'm very much looking forward to trying to put into this costume in places. Basically yesterday I spent some time looking around at what my mom has and kind of putting ideas together along with this. And then I ended up with the illustration that you saw in the thumbnail and over here right now on the screen. So I'm not much of an illustrator, but this is the basic idea of what I'll be doing and things might change as I go along. That's how original designs usually go. So let's see how it all goes. Let's get started. All right, so it's day two of me working on the original Zelda cosplay. Yesterday, I managed to get all the pieces cut out, which were quite a few. So today I'm going to try to start out with the skirt. I think that's the best place to start as it's kind of like the 
un most undermost layer. So I've now got to separate all the skirt pieces from here, which includes these big pieces of bias tape, the biggest bias tape I've ever made, which would be for the trim, which I did cut off camera because it was, I was on the floor and it was just a very complicated situation. So was well, not nice footage anyway. So yeah, today I'm gonna be taking this Duchess satin and trying to make it into a really nice skirt. Right, so I've done all the circle skirt seams. I did figure out this is actually a half circle, so that's cool. I didn't realize that before because I've never laid down this pattern side by side like this. But I finished all the seams, so I showed you one in the video, but I, uh, you know, I just repeated that six times, I think it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, yep. And now I just have to do the back, but first I just wanted to show you guys the half circle shape that ended up happening here, so. There it is, and now I've got to do a French seam up to about right here, probably, to get that back finished up. But overall, it's pretty neat how the shape turned out like that. I don't know how I never realized it was a circular shape, besides at the waist. Yeah, so let's get this going.
So off camera, I've gone and done the hems on the purple pieces like the sleeves and the skirt piece. Um, I ended up not having any thread that matches or at least not enough to do this kind of surged edge. So I've decided to do it in contrast that matches other colors elsewhere in the costume instead because it's either have it be a completely off pink and really stand out or have it act as a contrast that also matches elsewhere in the costume. So I've gone and done that. My machine did not like these threads very much, so it's quite the long process, much longer than it should have taken, but now they're all good to go and ready to be put into a garment. So I'm gonna start sewing together the bodice and get these guys in there eventually. So let's do that. So yesterday I managed to finish most of the bodice part of the garment and I did a lot of it off camera because I accidentally forgot to film some sections but I have the bodice all put together, the sleeves all finished and attached and I even did the lining which is this lighter purple here which is from my Ocarina of Time Young Zelda. So now I'm having to sew this all down by hand to attach so it's not all up and everywhere and so it's in there properly and so everything's finished nice on the inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it all by hand but pretty happy with how it's looking. I did try it on make sure everything fit. It did fit quite nicely and I'm really happy with how this drape in the front's looking. It's looking quite elegant and adds enough to the shoulder and, and uh, front area. I don't need to make any armor for this particular design so I'm pretty happy about that. So let's get hand sewing it. Okay, so I'm done with the lining. It is now all inside the garment, all nice and finished up. Raw edges are nowhere to be seen. 
And now I'm at a point where I was able to try it on without any of the lining getting all over. So I was able to try it on properly to see how well it was fitting. And um, I don't have any zippers for this, as you can tell, because I have not put one in yet. Um, I don't have an invisible zipper. I don't have any that match this, because again, I'm kind of limited on what I have. So I've decided the best way I'm going to close this off is with a hook and eye method. So in order to do that, I need to try it on and figure out how much everything overlaps. So um, off camera, I did try it on and my mom pinned me into it. And then she pin marked where the, how much the overlap was sitting. So there's the pin mark she put. So it was tight on the waist and there was hardly any space and it kind of tapered in. I have a bit of a weird back. Um, my shoulder blades protrude a lot. So yeah, this would not be what everyone's would look like if anyone trying this method, checking where the overlap is, this would be a tiny bit different. So this is what mine looks like. And now I'm gonna thread based a line here and that's what I'll be used as a gauge and a guide in order to apply the hook and eyes. Right, so that is the bodice on. It's kind of a little bit of a crop top because it's right at my waist right now, but it will have a skirt later, so no big deal. I am pretty happy with how this is turning out. It is complete at this point, besides some other details I might decide to add later. So while making it, I did realize that my back closure way is not the best. Well, I already knew it to begin with. So it does have a little bit of the lining showing. Not ideal, but it's what I could do with what I had. Ideally, I would have preferred to have a zipper back here, but I do with what I can. So this works quite nicely. The bodice ended up fitting quite nicely with no adjustments and only having to make the closure overlap a little bit at an angle going small to large on the back. If I were to use this pattern again, I think I would move where the sleeves are going. I think I'd move it to slit more in the front, but for now, the side works quite well. My movement is a little limited and I think that's because of how tight it is and how the arms sit, but I can move it quite well. So what I need to do, if I want to do the uh, I could kind of do it. All in all, I'm pretty happy with how this is looking and I am also pretty happy the back will be covered by really long hair in the end. But yeah, I'm liking how this looks quite a lot. So hey, this is Editing Annie, and um, at this point, the video was starting to get a little on the long side, so I've decided to cut it and make it into a two-parter. This costume does indeed require a two-parter, it would just become too lengthy. So be sure to like, subscribe, and all that good stuff, and come back next week to check out when I start working on some of the details, which is where I get a little on the creative side and kind of change from my original designs a bit. Hopefully this will also include some pretty footage of the costume, because at that point it should be completed and at a point where I can get nice footage and perhaps some nice photos with my mother. So be sure to tune in for that.